Hey guys, today we're going to talk about our final agent of erosion, glaciers. Glaciers are amazing agents of erosion that can transport rocks and boulders the size of a house. Like rivers of ice, they travel downhill under the influence of their own gravity from high elevation to low elevation. A glacier is a persistent body of dense ice that is constantly moving under its own weight. They exist in a balance. Typically, glaciers form when snowfall exceeds the amount of snow melt. So when snowfall is high and less of that material is melting because of colder temperatures, the snow accumulates and accumulates and accumulates. Over time, the overlying layers squeeze that snow into a very dense mass of ice that moves downhill. They're like giant conveyor belts or bulldozers that transport material. There's two types of glaciers based on where they form. We have alpine glaciers and we have continental. Let's start with the alpine. Alpine glaciers form at high altitudes. They form in the mountains. And of course, mountains are cold places, places where there's an abundance of snow. And when that snow accumulates, glaciers form, and they actually move under their own gravity downhill. And in the way, they actually carve out those valleys, broadening them and steepening them. And as they do that, they actually collect and scour out and scrape those valley walls, transporting a lot of that rock material from high elevation to lower elevation. We can see that erosion. We can see those rocks being transported because we can see these sort of glacial stripes, almost like they're race stripes in the middle of the glacier. We call these moraines, and those are just basically big piles of rocks that are being transported by the glacier. You can see the glaciers moving through a valley. Here's another one moving downhill. Along the valley wall, as the glacier scrapes and plucks the rock from the valley, rocks fall from high elevation and land at the edge of a glacier. We call these lateral moraines. When two glaciers meet each other at a joining part point, these lateral moraines actually converge to form medial moraines. These are the glacial material transported at the center of the glacier. Glaciers advance until they don't, and then they melt and retreat. As they retreat, the material that they've been carrying gets deposited at the leading edge. We call these end or terminal moraines. You can see there's a series of them based on a series of melting events. How does this whole thing move? We're talking trillions and trillions of tons of ice. How does something like that just pick up and move downhill? There's a couple things going on. Thinking back to metamorphic rocks, when you squeeze those rocks, the minerals align themselves. The same thing happens to the ice crystals. This creates sort of a plastic flow where it behaves almost like a putty, slowly creeping its way downhill, very slowly. Sometimes meltwater actually melts its way through the glacier and lubricates the base of the glacier. This creates what we call basal slip, where the massive ice sheet can actually slip over the bedrock that it's riding on. Generally, glaciers are fastest at the center. Just like a straight flowing river, the valley walls are going to slow down the glacier along the edges of the walls, while the center of the mass of ice will tend to creep and slide ahead in a faster velocity. As it carves out valleys, it has a tendency to widen them. Glaciers typically like to exploit former stream valleys. You guys may recall that rivers carve out V-shaped valleys as they downcut in the landscape. Well, if you filled that with water and then froze it, it's going to expand. 
glaciers, therefore, leave behind U-shaped valleys because of the expansion of ice and the plucking and abrasion that occurs along the valley walls as it moves downhill. Here we see a pre-glacial landscape, a river valley with a V-shaped canyon to it. Here's the river carving through the landscape, after which a glacier then advances through that valley, broadening it and widening it. And therefore, after the glacier retreats and melts, what we have left over is a broad U-shaped valley with a lot of other geologic features that the glacier creates as it moves over the topography or the landscape that was there before it. In addition to alpine glaciers, we also have continental glaciers. These are vast sheets of ice that can cover entire continents, Antarctica, Greenland, and yeah, much of North America where we live was once covered over 10,000 years ago by a vast sheet of ice. We've gone through several glacial periods throughout Earth's history where glaciers advance from the north during colder climates and then retreat when the climate warms. Our Great Lakes were formed from this advancing ice sheet as it carved out these big depressions, which then filled in with meltwater. In fact, the Finger Lakes, just to the south of us here in Western New York, are a product of our last glaciation. Notice how they do look like fingers in the landscape, and notice how they're all oriented north to south. That's because our glaciers advanced from the north, from Canada, where the colder climates were, and it moved to the south, carving out these Finger Lake valleys. There's other telltale signs that a glacier's been in the landscape. Glaciers carry a lot of rocks, and as it does so, it carries those rocks and scrapes them along the bedrock below. And as it does that, it can create these parallel grooves and sometimes glacial scratches where it polishes the rock and leaves behind these striations or scratches in the rock. The direction of these scratches usually indicates the direction the glacier is moving north to south. Other telltale signs. Glaciers are very messy. If they were like criminals, they would leave behind a lot of evidence. When the glacier melts, all of the debris it was carrying, the boulders, the cobbles, the pebbles, the sand, just simply gets dropped from the erosional system. It's not organized like a river is. It just melts and dumps it into a giant pile of rock that is unsorted, big boulders next to tiny pebbles and sand. There's no layering, just big deposits of a jumbled mixture of rock. We call this material glacial till. Furthermore, we see evidence that glaciers have been in landscapes when we find big boulders that are very different from the bedrock that they sit on. Here we have a giant metamorphic rock that could be sitting on limestone. How did it get there? Many argue these big rocks came from Canada, potentially. The glacier transported it. When the glacier melted, it just dropped it randomly in the landscape. For this reason, we call them glacial erratics, giant boulders that were deposited from our last glaciation. That's it from today, guys. We'll see you later.